Jones. He's a proud union leader, devoted husband of 40 years with four children, 13 grandchildren, two great grandchildren, who is also the parish of his church, New Jerusalem Get Fellowship. Away, Please welcome Richard Jennings. <laughs> come on, come on now. That was all right for me. But all of us that know him, let's give God some praise up yeah! here. Because it, it all pertains to all of us as being on one accord. I'm a proud union member of ASME 13 under the direction of Mr. Dave Philman, also Council 90, President of Local 2162, Maintenance and Trades, and I'm here to tell everybody that if we are not on one accord, we're going to fall. We cannot allow this. I'm a proud member. I work as a custodian with Maintenance and Trades. I'm here to stand my fellow Pennsylvanians for a fair and balanced budget, yes. a budget to build Pennsylvania in future, not to break communities apart, yeah. and how is cutting jobs and taking away education funding is going to create any jobs. It can't create no jobs if they're going to take it away from us. And the cuts, the cuts mean a lot to me. As long, my wife is a, a heart transplant re recipient. She's doing good, but now she's on the kidney list. So if they cut these here health care, the, all the health courses, all the health programs, when it's time for me to retire next year, 2012, February, I can't retire. I got to stay here and work a couple years. I ain't got no problem with that because I'm not going to leave here until we get a fair budget, yeah. a fair contract. Until my sons and my daughters who work at the state and the public sector and also the school board, the school board knows that we have a fair budget, but not on the backs of the banking family. Yeah. We're ready to roll up our sleeves right now and find real long-term solutions. But our elected officials should do the same. Governor Corbett, budget is not about sheer sacrifice, it's about our sacrifice. Stop taking from us to get more to the rich. Close the corporate loopholes, and the time for a change is clearing now. Thank you, brother. Now we have uh, Ella Brown. Ella Brown is a participant in, in Resources for Human Development's Endow a Home program, which helps low-income women become homeowners. She recently completed her associate's degree while living with a disability and being the single caregiver for her two grandchildren. Please welcome Ella Brown. Depression, but with the support I received, I stuck it through. 
and received my degree last May. Yeah. I am currently entering an accelerated program in which I will receive my bachelor's in computer science and information technology at Pierce College. This year's budget, this year's state budget would potentially cut funding for important programs like housing assistance, education assistance, and medical coverage. These are the types of things that help me have a safe place to raise my family and get my education. If you cut funding for housing programs and others, it will affect not only other grandparents, but also single women raising children and lots of low-income families. The numbers of homeless will in, people will increase dramatically. People become homeless for all sorts of reasons. It's not just drug abuse. It's not mental health challenges. It's also people who have lost their jobs, abused women trying to get away, or people who better have victims because they can't pay their bills. Increase self-help options, decrease dependence on public welfare as the program empowers families to help themselves and each other in a safe and supportive environment. Nevertheless, this can't be done if government pulls out the foundation from these programs by cutting back on the financial support. The proposed cutback significantly impedes families becoming empowered to take responsibility for themselves and each other. They will further negatively impact the establishment of a stable home environment that supports good school attendance, regular medical checkups, minimize behavioral problems, all of which significantly increase government costs for the care of these families. By taking a more optimistic view when exploring potential cutbacks, we provide the opportunity for these single moms to become productive, taxpaying citizens setting a positive example by becoming independent, self-sufficient members of the community. Ultimately, these programs decrease the dependency on public welfare system, freeing up funds to address pressing community needs. I would like to see compromises made on the state budgets, not just cuts. Just cutting the budget is too easy. I believe if our leaders work hard enough and listen to the ideas of other speakers today, they can find a way to balance the budget without cutting important programs that would affect people like me and you. Please, please think about our children, think about my grandchildren, they are our future. Thank you God, thank you in their home, and thank you for taking the time to listen to me. We got a couple more uh, representatives here that dropped by. Representative Tim Briggs, Representative Bill Keller, Representative Kenyatta Johnson, Brian Barberi, Brendan Boyle, Senator Vincent Hughes, John Sabatino, Steve Sarantino, Rick Barbito, Mike Starla, Paul Costa, Dan Derry, Luke Robinson, Mike Hanna, Joe Brennan, Eugene DePasquale, Clarence Thomas, Matt Smith, Josh Shapiro, Matt Bradford, Eddie Day Pazinski, Denny O'Brien, Senator David Lynch, and Representative Jared Gibbons. And Rod Matthews. Up next from SCIU 660, Connie Perez has worked for almost 30 years at Norristown State Hospital. She's a therapeutic recreational staff worker. She's a mother of four and a proud grandmother of six. Please welcome Connie Perez. Dear sisters and brothers of all unions, I am a proud SEIU member and an employee of Norristown State Hospital for almost 30 years. As a recreational staff member, I see firsthand the benefits my clients receive from public services I provide. Without these services, my clients would be on the street. During this economic downturn, the services I provide are more important than ever. And I am here to say, Mr. Governor, we need to continue to invest in these services that make my community stronger and make my clients safer. Additionally, I'm a mother of four wonderful 
children, I am extremely proud to say that my son is currently a student at Temple University in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. He's studying kinesiology. My son works full time to fund his education. It is devastating that higher education is facing 50% cuts in funding because we will not hold corporate accountable and make them pay their fair share. Yeah. because of impending gauge and tuition prices. Furthermore, I'm a beaming grandmother of six precious children. However, rather than investing into our future, we are taking away their opportunities. At this rate, my grandbabies will not see a kindergarten class, foreign language studies, or have availability to tutoring. I, myself, am a proud taxpayer of Pennsylvania, a homeowner, a responsible steward, and all I'm asking is that big corporations follow my example and do the same. So that I can take my grandchildren to kindergarten next year, and you also. and receive a diploma yeah. and so that I can see my clients become productive members of society. I am here and so are you to take a stand and I'm glad you are all standing with me. Yes, we did.